My message this morning is entitled, His Chosen. And a better way of expressing it is the importance of meeting our Lord Jesus on his terms, on his terms, not our own. That's why we are chosen in him. He's our master. He's our Lord. He is the one who is the, the captain of the ship, if you want to put it that way. The one whose orders are to be given without question because what he tells us to do, what he has us to, to say, always is be for, be for our better, our, our good. In so many religious circles today, the cart is put before the horse in that the necessary primary choosing process in the need of personal salvation is incorrectly attributed to the penitent sinner rather than the biblical principle of our Lord Jesus reaching out at first for the purpose of, con of conversion and ultimate salvation. As clearly shown throughout scripture, such nonsense is sure to open up a Pandora's box of many such false concepts of who our Lord Jesus actually is and his perfect purpose for mankind. For any who would say that I do not know what I am talking about, let us look in scripture at a primary example among many which underscores my statement here. At first, let us consider who our Lord Jesus is not. Let's consider who he is not. Scripture is very clear and explicit in identifying the phony Jesus. I want to point out here before I give this scripture, I want to say this. Our Lord Jesus is not a fictitious character or character like Jack and the Beanstalk or the gingerbread man as shown in many children's fantasy uh, books. Jesus is real. And we have a lot of people today which relegate him in a careless way of being of lesser importance. Like as if he's kind of like a comic book character or worse. This is sad. This is one reason why our churches in many cases are empty or nearly empty. And often behind the pulpit you have pastors or teachers, ministers who don't really declare the full counsel of God's word and certainly do not identify who Jesus really is not and who Jesus really is. I have a scripture here that will point out who he is not. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 through 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 through 4. This points out who Jesus is not. Paul is saying, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, who is Christ. He's talking to the, to the true believers. That I may present you at, as, as, as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now here's the point. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, and that's speaking in reference to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, where Satan beguiled Eve and told her, go ahead and take fruit of that forbidden tree. You'll, you'll, you'll become as gods. And so she foolishly did what he told her to do. And that's why we're having the problems we're having today, because we're given a message that sounds so good, as Eve was given a message that sounds so good, by this, what appeared to be an archangel, a beautiful, beautiful spirit, who was Satan, who tempted her and convinced her and persuaded her to do that which was wrong. So through his serpent, through his subtlety, 
so that your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So there is a counterfeit Jesus. And as I continue, for he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, for he, if he that cometh, preacheth another Jesus, we have not, pre have not preached, or if we receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Now in reference to false gospels, Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 12, speaks also of the importance of, of, of averting, avoiding false gospels. So the Bible warns us about that which is not to our benefit. You might very well, very well with him. In other words, check out, check everything you hear scripturally. Here's one verse that, that warns us the importance of checking things out. Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Revelation <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. It's right in the God's word. Revelation 3, 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews or Judeans and are not. They're lying. It says, but they do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. God's love is directed to his children, not to Satan or Satan's children. That must be understood. Titus chapter 1, verses 14. Titus chapter 1, verses 14. In understanding Revelation 3, 9, which we just read, Titus 1, 14 gives us a wonderful, a wonderful warning. It warns, it warns us against all false teaching and false teachers. It says this, Titus 1, 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables. Now, let me stop here. The true Judeans... Are not what he's talking about here. He's talking about those I met, I read about in Revelation 3 9, who say they are Jews or Judeans, but they lie. It's a false identification. So keep that in mind here. And not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Jesus said to the devil, are to these people we're talking about here who are called the Jews who are really are not, the ones who lie. It says, you're of your father, the devil. That's in John chapter 8, verses, verse 44. John 8, verse 44. Titus chapter 1 speaks of God our Lord Jesus who cannot lie. We saw here that God cannot lie. So what Jesus says can be relied upon. In our Lord Jesus, in his own words, we are by virtue of his divine love for us admonished as to that which we should always say and do. John 15, verses 14 through 17, also follows the same principle. The Lord Jesus is speaking here. John chapter 15, verses, verses 14 through 17. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, 
for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father. All things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That's why I said in many churches we, we, we put the cart before the horse. We take this person who has no idea what he's doing, go to Jesus and get him to save you. You've got to know who Jesus is before you can really, really, uh, before you can try to approach him. But he approaches you and he sets things right before you make a decision for him. Yes. I've seen where it was turned around the other, other way. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit as results. And your fruit should remain. By their fruits ye shall know them. That's why when we have so-called conversions that take place in churches, there is no real effort to really follow up, to disciple. And so the person who got supposedly saved, probably didn't, didn't, didn't get saved at all because he had no idea what he's doing. And so he's, he's in a worse state than he was before because now he thinks he's saved when he's not, if that's the case. So that's important we let people know. We should know by virtue of our own testimony who Jesus is not and who Jesus is. I continue. And whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, the Lord is speaking here, ask of the Father in my name, not in, not, not in Art Lake's name, the name of anybody here, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He may give it you these things I command you that ye love one another that you love one another. Don't put yourself over and above a fellow Christian because you may think that they're at a different level of understanding than you. And they may have something that come out that will say, they may say that would be just not right. It's not because they're led of the devil, it's because they haven't yet learned. And you don't turn your back on them. You get together with them and you, first of all, you pray. And then lovingly, he helped to teach them. The last thing you want to say is, you idiot, you've got it all wrong. All that'll do is turn them off. Lovingly work with them as a brother and sister in Christ. And also you hope that there'll be others who have a higher understanding than you will, will, deal, will work with you in the same way. <clears throat> I'm happy. To say we are a bragging church. And all of our boasting and bragging is directed entirely to and for our Lord Jesus Christ and not to ourselves. Amen. Right. We can't boast of ourselves. I love to boast and brag on Jesus. Amen. He alone. And he and the Holy Spirit and God the Father. The three are one. Brag on him. I love to brag on Jesus. If I brag on myself as being holier than you, then I need to be, need to be taken to the woodshed and given a good thrashing. And the Holy Spirit will do it. The only goodness and righteousness we have is due to his love and mercy which he has given us by way of the cross. I could spend a lot of time just bragging on the cross of Christ. The Bible is so full of this wonderful, wonderful gift and blessing by way of his willing, willing sacrifice for you and me. That's love, perfect love that casteth out all fear. And we should have that same love one for another. Scripture abounds with the truth of his glory and eternal deity. I share with you here a few examples 
from the abundant treasure of his precious word by divine inspiration. The Apostle Paul declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. <clears throat> now, this is speaking of the true Jesus. And Apostle Paul had and has a wonderful love for the Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. Verse 4. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ that in everything we are enriched by him Amen. in all utterance yes. and in all knowledge even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that ye come behind in no gift. There's nothing I can give of myself. What I give to you is what Jesus gave me. Amen. You cannot be saved by my righteousness. I can't be saved by my righteousness. The righteousness of Christ is available to us all. Amen. We have nothing to offer of ourselves for our righteousness. And continuing, wanting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless. Ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. at the time of his coming, which I believe may be soon. We don't know. Amen. We cannot set a timetable. There was a time when there was, back in 1987, there was a book that came out this, that was entitled 88 reasons why Jesus Christ is coming back in 1988. And I thought, in 1987, being, being, being just a babe in Christ, I thought, wow, this is wonderful. And I read that book, and it, boy, it sounded good. But it's not true. If I were to tell you Jesus is coming back before uh, 2024, I'm, I'm walking on thin ice. It may be true, but I don't know. But we should always occupy till he comes. Always be ready, because the day could be the day. The conditions in the world today are such that the return of Christ could be Amen. imminent. So be ready. And, your, and, and let your testimony be one which when you appear before the bema seat of Christ, not the judgment seat, but the bema seat of Christ, where you receive rewards, you will hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Welcome thou into the joy of thy Lord. Amen. And he'll give you a golden crown. And I'll take that crown and I'll lay it at the foot of his, of his throne. Right. I'll say, it belongs to you. Because you're the one that purchased it for me on the cross. Amen. Everything I have is yours. First Corinthians chapter two, verses one through five. <clears throat> First Corinthians two, verses one through five. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. And I was with you <clears throat> in weakness and in fear and in much trembling and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom Stay away from religion that is organized and originated from man's wisdom. It must be always from the wisdom of God's precious word. Always. But in demonstration, but in demonstration 
of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Again, not man's wisdom, not in the wisdom of men. Stay away from cults. Any, any religious system that will deny the deity of Jesus Christ, watch out. That's a red, that's a red flag right there. A system that will, that will diminish his deity in any way, even in a subtle way, and just say he's just a, he was just a good man who talked about God. Don't even darken the door of that place if that's all they have to teach, because it's wrong. He is, he, he is king of kings and lord of lords. Not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And then we turn to John 16, verses 1 through 3, which I love. I love one of my favorite passages. These things, John chapter 16, verses, verses 1 through 3. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. That'll come someday. That was the case back in the time of Jesus. They think they're doing God's service. I want to point out here that you can See John chapter 12, verses 42 for 43. John chapter 12, verses 40, 42 and 43 speaks of the same, the same incident. Verse 3. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. If you don't know Jesus who he really is and you don't know the Father and you, and you don't have the blessings of the Holy Ghost. You are uh, like a goose in a hailstorm. <laughs> you don't know where you're coming from or where you're going. That's why you must have a real relationship with the, with the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. In that you have, that you'll know him because he knows you. He's the one that, that initiated the relationship between you and him. And the way he did it he is perfect and he cannot lie. He said, I chose you, you have not chosen me. He's, he's, he, he's not lying. Exactly what he meant, I chose you. I love the account of Peter's total commitment and devotion to our Lord Jesus, which occurred shortly after his fearful denial of his Savior, with his fear that which the fear that which men might do to him, including being crucified as well. Being completely overcome in seeing the risen Christ, Peter was willing, if need be, to charge hell with a squirt gun. At one time he was scared to death when Jesus was being just about to be, to be taken to the crucifixion. And Peter was asked, first of all, Jesus said this. He says, before the cock does crow, you'll deny me thrice. You'll deny me three times. And Peter said, no, I will never deny you. And Jesus says, yes, you will. Before the cock does crow, you will deny me. And then when, it, when this event actually took place, Peter wept bitter tears of remorse and regret and sorrow. But due to this, and because of this, he was transformed. Amen. He was transformed into a saint of God that really means business with the Lord. And I love where it says in John chapter 21, John chapter 21, of the regeneration of Peter. After the denial, denial took place in three instances. 
But then we have three instances that take place in John chapter 21, which overshadow these first three. Let us start chapter 21, starting in verse 15. They, 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 they had already dined, and Peter was confused at this point, or he had been up to this point, but now he's beginning to really get it together. So when they had dined, Jesus said unto to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these things, than these? Peter, that is, Peter saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. The Lord Jesus saith unto him, feed my lambs. He's given him a specific ministry. Feed my lambs. That's the first. He saith unto him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, yea, Lord, yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. The Lord Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Amen. He's consistent in this command. Verse 17, he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest all things. He's the living God. The Lord Jesus Christ can never make mistakes. And his choice, that's why I titled my lesson, His Chosen. We're chosen in him. And Peter was chosen in him even before the foundation of the world. And we all go through experiences in our life that we can say, you know, I wish I'd, I wish I'd have known what I know now because I wouldn't have done those things if I'd have known. Spoke to him the third time. Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, uh, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep, the lambs and the sheep of his past. Read John chapter 10, speaks of the sheep of his pasture. Then the latter part of John chapter 10, it speaks of those who are not the sheep of his pasture. That group, he says, I, I know you're not. You're, 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 you're not in my sheepfold. He's talking to those who are the counterfeiters. Esau Edomites, Kazer Canaanites, who slipped in, and they are the children of the devil. And most of our churches today, unfortunately, are confused as to who's who and what's what. That's why we have no revival. <clears throat> and it says in verse 18, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest wherever thou would be, would, 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 whichever thou would, wouldest. Whereas we, we kind of just set our own, our own way of doing things, regardless of what God says. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee wherever thou shalt go, and wherever thou wouldst not. That would not. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who completed that for us. I want to uh, <clears throat> read a scripture in closing. 
John chapter 5, verse 21. First cha John chapter 5, verses 21. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth, that is, make alive them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Amen. So he being the fullness of life in everything, He's the one who's, who makes the decisions. He is the one who chooses us. God bless.